What's going on, guys? My name is Julian Young. I am the host of the Blockchain Brief, where every episode we are interviewing innovators and founders in the blockchain and crypto space. Today, I'm really excited to have Ivan, the founder of Crypto Bud, with me. Uh, now, Crypto Bud is one of the top crypto YouTube channels in the space. So, Ivan, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I, I always enjoy these interviews because I get to meet people, awesome people, and uh, hopefully we get some good things going on today. Yeah, no, of course, of course. So, so let's dive right into it, right? Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, why did you start CryptoBud? How did you get into the space? All of that good stuff. Yeah, so, so basically, um, I, I've, been in, I've been in the financial markets for a very long time. Um, when I first went to college, I was actually going to become a, a, a banker. I was going to go through the investment route. Uh, actually did interviews with Lehman um, at, at that time. And um, I actually had a, basically a, an entire desire to go into, into the equity markets and do um, research. My real background really was about the equity markets back in 2000 and that, um, that, that line. So anyway, so a lot of things changed since then. Um, it was a very difficult decision, but what ended up happening was I didn't actually go through with it and kind of midway in, I decided to kind of back off a little bit. My actual background is actually in science. Uh, I'm actually a molecular biologist by trade. Um, and I was, I was double majoring during economics and I was gonna go to the MBA route and all that. But what happened was, really interesting story was during the dot-com bubble, I started doing my own research. I was gonna, I, about, about the financial you know, markets, you know, getting involved with the internet boom. And remember, this was like 1999, 2000. And what happened was I saw a lot of things that didn't really quite, um, I wasn't really quite happy with. There was a lot of greed in there in the market. There was a lot of uh, sketchy things happening with the banking system, even before the 2008 recession. So what happened was I changed careers completely uh, was and actually um, went into research and in, for for biotech um, companies, and so basically that's kind of what I did. And then I, I kind of put that be, that past behind me, and then now I discovered crypto, and I said, you know what? Let me try it one more time, and uh, here I go. And so I started that YouTube channel as just another way to kind of look at the markets again. I mean, I, I've always had that in my heart. It's just every single time we get these massive bubbles. Um, it always kind of tracks me back. So I started that YouTube channel as a way to kind of um, document and reflect back at some of the experiences I had in 2000 and learn from them. So if you see my, if you watch my YouTube channel, you'll see that I, I do reference a lot of the financial markets. I do reference a lot of the strategies. And in, in reality, I think um, that actually helped me a lot because this wasn't my first rodeo. And so that YouTube channel was really just for me. It was just mainly just an experiment. I wasn't intending on monetizing any of it. Um, and then as it kind of grew the channel, the channel grew and people liked what I saw, I just got more motivated to continue. And here I am in 2018. And so it's been a long journey since 2000. Uh, but I'm glad I'm back where I kind of start. It's almost been like a full circle. I love it. I love it. And so does your family understand what you're working on and what you do? Yeah, they do. In fact, uh, my, my boys have, have shown up on the videos and my live streams and they've, it's really difficult to do it with a family. I can tell you that. I wish sometimes I was like, I was 20 years old, like some of the other YouTubers, but uh, because then I would have all the time in the world to do videos. Uh, but yeah, they, they know. And in, in, in many cases, I kind of feel guilty because they do spend a lot of time doing content behind the scenes, uh, reading, you know, all that stuff. And I do take away time from the family. And sometimes they ask me, I say, well, you know, are, are, are you okay? You know, it's going, especially when the market's going down and uh, I, and, but it's more about time away from the family. I think that's what it is, but they do know that, but I do tell them that, you know, this is one of the best opportunities that I was ever given um, because th this, this only happens every so often. And I, I waited 18 years since the last bubble um, to kind of do this again. And so here I am again, but uh, my wife actually, she's really understanding. I really love her. She's one of those that supported me every single step of the way when I do conferences, when I'm, I'm, I'm out flying to different venues. Uh, so it's been challenging to say the least. Um, I do work, I do have a full-time job um, on top of what I'm doing. And so it's been really taxing for the last couple of months, but uh, I love it. It's my, it's my passion. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing stuff, man. Um, yeah, everyone makes sacrifices to get into this space. And it's, it's uh, as you know, it's a 24-7 industry, which is great. Um, so I want your input a little bit more about sort of the impact of media on the crypto markets, right? So I think it's interesting that this was more of a diary for you uh, to kind of go back in time. But as you've seen that over time, you know, media is starting to play a bigger and bigger role in, in the blockchain space. So 
talk to me a little bit about you know some of the good things that you see, and then I would love to hear about bad things that you see as well, um, and then just any other uh, comments and notes that you want to make about the space. Yeah, so you know what's really interesting is uh, when I first got on YouTube, I, I thought YouTube was like one of the best channels out there. I mean, you could literally learn anything you want. Um, in reality, I, I'm a big fan of the movie The Matrix, and YouTube really reminds me of that time when Neo um, was plugging into the matrix and he wanted to learn how to fly a helicopter or something. I remember that scene, you know, I was like, you know what? It's really cool. So as YouTube began to evolve, it was very interesting to see that you can learn about anything without going to university. In fact, you can actually learn about how to cook, how to build, how to do anything. And what I found about YouTube was that it was always this sense of community. It was almost kind of like everybody in behind the scenes was always very willing to help. And I really loved that part about YouTube, that it was truly free in, in many different capacities. So when I first started the channel, I kind of had that in mind. I, you know, I wasn't really interested in the money. It, it, really, it was just something interesting. But what happened was as time progressed, I've noticed that there was a lot of, there was a, there was a little bit of, um, when you bring money in, in picture, especially things like financial products, it's very difficult to do that um, without having people attacking you for certain things. Um, there was actually a, a great, the great thing about YouTube is I have almost unlimited amounts of reach across the globe. And, and that's, that's, I think one of the benefits of social media. And I do think that me as some of the older, I would consider myself, you know, more of the older folk uh, versus some of the twenties the and the teens because social media has definitely changed the way I do this. Before I used to think, oh, you know what, YouTube videos, it's all about cat videos, it's all about random stuff, you know, people posting. But now I'm beginning to understand that social media has a much, much greater impact overall. Twitter, same thing. However, at the same time, I've noticed also that because when you bring money into the picture, people get really emotional and there's a lot of things like trolling, for example. I remember the first my, my, doing my first live stream it was very difficult to kind of look at these words that are coming out of people, especially as people were either a losing money or greed was taking in or egos were being put in. And it was, I, I read through it and I was kind of like, man, if I was like a 10 year old, I would be decimated by this, this, the type of content that people were just writing out. And so there was also, there was also this, this, um, I think people behind, behind these keyboards. And I think it's really hard for me was to kind of, reconcile that. I'm kind of used to it now. Um, so on a good note, media has definitely reshaped it because it's allowed me to connect with people that have never been able to connect before. I mean, literally like my reach now has grown so much and I've met thousands of people just by, just by social media alone. And I do have a Twitter account that I'm growing as well. And I, I flew out to New York. I was mentioning it before a couple of months ago and people were just like, Hey, crypto, bud, you know, I, thank you very much. And, you know, people I never even knew. So it was, it was very interesting. I almost felt like a little mini celebrity uh, in many cases. And all I had was a camera and just myself. So I think tech uh, technology as, as a whole has, amplified the reach so much so that it's basically made this phenomenon global for me. Um, now on the dark side, social media has brought up a lot of different things like trolling, uh, people uh, accusing me of pump and dumps, shilling. Um, you know, the, the dark side of it is that everybody gets lumped into one. And so, yeah, sure, I do my, my fair share of shilling, I guess you want to call it but not to the extent of some of the scams that have been been there. And on my channel, I always disclose every single piece and I try to maintain integrity and honesty to the best of my ability because I do understand that the reach has, has definitely a lot of impact. So I, I do hope that people understand that not everybody should be grouped together. And media kind of tends to um, glump everybody together in one sum, saying all of crypto people are these scammers, are these chillers, are these pump and dumpers, and there are a good chunk of those, but I think it's it's a small percentage relative to everything. So I think it's amplified, as you already know. So I, I, I mean, I could talk about media all day long, but I think that those were the only ones. And um, I started the channel back in March, and it's been a whole year. I felt like I've grown. Uh, so much just learning all the intricacies of it. And I'm still learning a little bit about how social media functions. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of like the old old guy in there because I'm still learning how Reddit works, how Twitter kind of feeds in, how YouTube actually works, Facebook, all of these pieces. And there's just so much more. And, and the younger folks, I think, have a lot more edge because they've, they've grown up with it a lot more than I have. But um, I find it to be extremely, extremely um, productive in many cases. And, and um, overall, I, I would just wish the community would sometimes band together instead of attacking each other. I think that's the other part. 
And, um, and uh, it kind of brings the case to about cyberbullying and all that, which is kind of interesting because you do see kids in there who kind of get bullied. And I can see somebody with a younger age frame, they would probably feel like they're getting attacked because everything is so, you know, vicious <laughs> in many ways. But also it's very, very productive. And I think it actually helps people. No, that's, that's, that's an awesome answer there. So why don't we jump into some projects that you're excited about um, and would love to hear the reason why. You can just rattle off one or two. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm actually known for the Neo guy for some reason. <laughs> um, uh, last year when I, when I was covering the space, there was a lot of projects that was really into it, um, one of them being Neo. And for those of you guys who follow my channel, you, you've known that I've, I guess, chilled Neo for, for all it's worth. Um, but one of, one of the projects that I'm really interested in right now, I mean, there's two of them really, actually. I think Neo has been one of them. Um, I'm one of the few that... I mean, I guess you can call it, you can call it, I guess I'm, I'm more loyal to my projects than anything else. Kind of like the Bitcoin people, you know, they kind of kind of in there. Uh, Neo has been and will be, and for me, the project that I'm probably going to live and die with. And, and the reason why it's because it's one of those projects that I covered for almost a year now. I've actually covered every single piece of the tech I've covered. I've gone to actually hosting their conferences, um, doing interviews with all the founders. In fact, as my channel began to grow, I began to get invitations to do to attend these um, conferences and developer conferences and really work well with them. So for me, one of the projects I'm very, very excited about and I still continue to cover a lot in many different capacities is Neo. Um, that project has been, just been phenomenal. And I think um, it's going to get better and better as the project begins to gain steam overall. Uh, I am also very, very, along with that, that whole section, I'm also a very proponent of ontology. Um, it's, it's very interesting because a lot of people like to jump between coins. They're like, oh, one day one of the flavors is going to be verged, another day is going to be, you know, whatever. And then they forget about those coins and then they just keep on pumping coins left and right. For me, I like to look at projects that have an ecosystem being built, an infrastructure that's going to lead the way for blockchain. And I believe that NEO had started it last year when they rebranded from AntShares. And they've continued to actually plow right through the, the market and continue to prove to, to the community that they're, they're one of the top, top coins, top 10 um, coins in space. And then we got a lot of up and comers. The new, new guys are coming in. They are redefining the way blockchain is being built. And ontology is the other component that's coming in. And one thing I always try to tell people is this. When I'm looking at projects, I'm not looking for the one night stands, the one day pumpers, the, the coins that are just going to go flash in the pans. I'm looking for sustainability. And these two projects, I think, are going to be extremely huge. And I think the public really doesn't understand them yet just because they're in Asia. So there is a language barrier behind them. And the second thing is they've learned about Ethereum's problems and they're beginning to fix those in a different capacity. And I do think at the global level, China and Asia are going to be at the forefront of blockchain, even though we may or may not this we may or may not agree with that statement. So, if you ask me right now, which ones am I like really really gung ho about? Uh, it's going to be those two. And and I know people are like, well, that's already a billion dollar company, et cetera, et cetera. And I say, you know what? Um, that's what they said about Bitcoin a while, long time ago. And now look at it right now. And so, yeah, that's. I, I, I'm going to probably, like I said, if this whole thing is over, <laughs> I'm probably going to be known as the guy who shielded Neo all the way down to the, to the ground. I should start, I should stop using that word, but <laughs> I just love using it now. Cause I get, I get, I get so much of it. Uh, yeah, um, I know. I know. So, yeah. What I think is really interesting, Ivan, is sort of like the passion that you attach to your projects. And I'm curious if that was the same when you were a stock trader. Right. Like, why do you think people in the cryptocurrency world have this this different mentality of because like th there was always small companies that people like penny stocks that people could buy. Right. But there was never this. I believe in this thing to its core will stand by it to my death. And it's an interesting thing that's, I think, only pertinent to the crypto space. So I'm just curious to get your take on why you think that might be. Well, well, there's two parts to that. See, penny stocks is really interesting because penny stocks, a lot of them are just like, you want to pump and dump, go go to penny stocks in the equity market and you will know what exactly what I'm talking about. There's a lot of fraud. There's a lot of people just trying to make money. These projects are things that are going to change people's lives. See, that's, what, that's, that's the difference between traditional markets and these. When you buy a stock in Coca-Cola, for example, we all drink Coke, right? 
Coca-Cola goes up 100%, all right, big deal, but it's not gonna change the way I live. These projects are not penny stocks because penny stocks are basically the same thing, but even worse. You wanna go garbage bin? Yeah, you look at a penny stock for an unknown company, that's gonna be a pump and dump, that's where you should go. But these are actually more like the next wave of tech. And when I was in 2000, again, I, I could say that because for the people who were, who were, were kids in, in 2000, um, it's kind of like saying, I found, I found Google back in 2000, right? That, that's, that's the level that we're talking about. You can't do that with penny stocks because penny stocks are basically existing companies that are, that, that are just selling you ownership in the company. They've already, been, they've already been established. All they want to do is raise more money. Here, they're building the project and they're raising money at the same time. We, we've no, we never really had that part. So you don't know what the next five or years is gonna look like. I, I don't know, Neo has, has barely rolled out their, their existing tech. And you could say it's a bad thing because I would like to invest in things that are there. But if you were to do that, just go to the stock market. They've had, yeah, you can know exactly what they're coming. Part of me is being that pioneer, like going into that road that has never been walked before. And yeah, you can fall off into a ditch and die, or you can see what's outside on the other end. The other way I like to think of it is kind of like the explorers, you know, when they first discovered the United States, right? You had a guy who was going on a ship to God knows where, and he could have died in the middle of the ocean, but had he gone over the ocean, he would have found out that there was the United States and there's all these riches, right? And so that's the way I look at it. And that's why I'm so passionate about it because I'm curious to see what's out there. Now, last year when I covered answers, I put almost my entire life savings on it. I mean, literally, I, I tell people, like, like, don't follow my advice. It's not financial advice. But I, when I say all in, I literally go all in because it's kind of like that asymmetric trade that people talk about, right? If you go for a penny stock, you know that it's either going to be a fraud or you can make a lot of money. But at the end of the day, it's still the company's still there or, you know, it's it's not a secret, just drive down to the street and you can see the company. Here, they're building it on the fly. And I do think it provides a lot of risk, but it also provides a massive, massive amounts of opportunity. And that's why you're seeing those 40X gains and 50X gains, because literally, it's like that, that mentality that we are literally in Europe in the 1700s, as 15, 1400s. And there's an area on the other side called the Americas. And we don't know what's on the other side. And now you have an opportunity to get on a boat and sail to the other side, knowing that you could die in the process, or you can discover California, you can discover South America, you can discover all these different things you've never seen before. And I think that's the difference. That's why I spend so much time in it. And that's why I think crypto has literally changed the way I think about in terms of investing. And also the last part I like to think of is as we are actually the venture capitalists at heart. This is not um, late stage financing. This is really early stage. Even though we're not participating in the ICO market um, at the private sale level, we are still early enough that the product hasn't been made yet. And so that's why the market's so volatile and that's what attracts me the most as well. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, this is awesome. I'm sure we could go on for hours and hours yeah. about this. So uh, just to be respectful of your time, um, you know, what should we be excited about for the future of CryptoBud? And then we'd also love to hear a little bit more about sort of your other endeavor as well. Yeah, so, so there, there's, there's a lot of parts. I mean, I'm doing my, my, you know, my little academy. Part of me was, um, you know, I, I'm doing like the educational aspect of crypto. Yeah, we all like to make the 20x gains, 30x gains. But the reality is that people are coming into the space. They don't really have the understanding of market cycles. They don't have the understanding of, how these market moves work. Now, granted, it's a very speculative market. So this is actually, we're in that we'll call the speculative phase. Um, we are not in the government regulated area like the equity market, which means that somebody can come in with their life savings and just lose the whole thing tomorrow. I actually had my uh, mother-in-law ask me the other day, she says, I wanna get into Bitcoin and she has no clue about stock. She has no clue about real estate. I mean, she doesn't know about real estate, but she has no clue about crypto. She doesn't even know what Bitcoin is. She just says, get me in there. And when I hear that, that part, I usually wanna, part of me says, you know what, maybe you should wait like five or 10 years down the line but at the same token, I feel that that would be also be a disservice because if I know that this actually has the potential to change her life, either for the good, obviously also for the bad, um, and she's willing to take that, I think education is very important. I think that's more important than saying ban everything and don't let anybody in who doesn't know anything. 
the education piece, I think is going to bring in a lot of people into the space and it's going to also educate people so they don't get wrecked, I guess you want to call it. So part of me is doing the, the academy and the academy is really not pushing coins, not showing anything. It's just talking about how crypto is different from the financial markets and how people can get, learn about things like the wallets, things about how to look at coin fundamentals that are non-existent in the traditional markets. This is actually a very special time because you can't go to like school for MBA and look at cryptocurrency valuations. They don't have a class for that. If you go right now to, let's say, I don't know, Harvard Business, uh, Harvard Business School, you can learn about equity valuations from people who have done it for you know, 20, 30 years plus with credentials, with all of that. A lot of people are coming in on YouTube and they're listening to people who are talking about cryptocurrencies, but they don't understand that there's also the fundamental side that needs to go with it. Now, granted, there's really no, not much fundamentals, kind of technically speaking, because they don't have revenues, they don't have all that, but there are certain things that are in there. So part of me, what I'm trying to do here is also to sustain the channel and eventually move full into crypto is to start this kind of like academy. It's not, not courses like some of the ones you see online, but more of a comprehensive piece that would take somebody from A to Z and reduce the amount of time that they would take to actually do it themselves. And so a lot of people have actually come up to me and they're like, can, can I learn? I'm like, yeah, you can learn on your own. I mean, granted, you can go on YouTube, you can type in how to buy crypto, you can do all that yourself. But then there's the also the other part, which is I buy the coin, it goes up 80%, now what? Am I gonna buy and hold? Am I going to uh, you know, go all the way down with it? I, I got some new money I wanna put in, what do I do with it? And obviously that's all more in the educational space. The other part I'm also trying to do is partner up with traders and specifically with people who are more experienced in the space so I can bounce off ideas with. I'm a one man team and uh, I've been trying to recruit people who have anal analytical skills, um, data points um, that can cross over and building a team for doing a research division for just for my own personal trading and for everybody else. And that, that I think for me really drives me because that's what I, I did before. And from a scientific background, I always look at markets in the speculative phase, in the post-speculative phase, and also in the finding the maturing phase. And I think as I kind of go through that, building that community is important. That's why I always ask people on, on my channel, I said, if anybody here has research analytical skills that want to cross over to crypto, that's something I'm also building on the back end. And so probably in the next year or two, you'll probably see me opening up some sort of research fund um, that could assist people who perhaps maybe are a little bit more uh, um, serious about large scale um, investing once the space gets regulated. And then obviously there's the education piece about bringing people in on, on that space. And I think the, the media has allowed me to kind of connect with all these individuals as well. And also advising um, a lot of these companies, these, these companies who are early starting out with crowdfunding and, and, and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of pieces um, to that, uh, a lot of different facets of it. But the reality is for me is, is a continued growth in the obviously in the trading part of it, which I'm I'm a, I'm a huge part of, um, and also in the long term investing, and and I did mention that I did pull, post a lot of my money into ret in retirement, and I got a lot of flack for this by the way, where everybody was like, why would you why would you put money from crypto uh, from your retirement assets into into retirement? And the reason why is because I literally want to shave off a good 10, 15 years of my retirement um, using crypto. And I know that sounds like, that sounds bad. And again, not financial advice as I normally tell people, but that's, that's the level at which I'm at right now because I do feel that this is the only break I'm gonna get. Once this whole crypto piece completely changes and the speculative phase is over, we're gonna go back to the regular returns that you'll probably find in the bond market and the equity market, which are peanuts, if you actually think about it. And that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And that research arm that I'm building along with my community I'm building, it's going to accelerate that so that I can have more people that could give me more better ideas of how I can go about refining my analytical skills um, faster. I, I think that's part. And I always kind of have this, this idea. So I had a great mentor. He once told me, um, he says, surround yourself with people who are going to be better than you and also um, leverage your expertise to other people so you can leverage yourself. And so for me, that's, that's going to be the ultimate goal is to be able to amplify my skills out so that I could begin to move on to some of the bigger projects. I won't be doing videos forever. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. <laughs> so at some point it's going to end.
um, and 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 basically uh, that that's I, everything has its finality for me. <laughs> so no, that's 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 a great answer as well. So I'll, I'll make sure to include uh, the links to the academy and any other pertinent links that you find important uh, at the bottom of the YouTube video. Um, but again, CryptoBud, thank you so much for taking the time. We're we're looking forward to tracking the progress. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. All right, take care, man. Thank you. Thank you.